beer lovers out there, welcome to another episode of Your Brain on Hops. With me as always, I have... Alex. Dan. Thank you, Dan. Uh, today's episode has a very good theme, even though the beers are only somewhat related to it. The theme is America. Uh, you'll see what I mean later on, but first off, we want to talk about our own beer, the Your Brain on Hops IPA that we made on the last episode. It was made here in America. It was. Thank you, Alex. America. Yes. So even this beer relates to it. Yeah, it's uh, it's done, and we're tasting it, and it is delicious. If I, I do say so myself, which which I don't. I agree. I think it is very delicious. It's smooth. The bitterness is very smooth, and uh, there's tons of hop flavor in there, citrus and just tropical fruits. I love it. I'm... A little sad we have to share this with so many people. It's how we get the beer out there, Alex. <laughs> Think of that. The more people that know and enjoy it, the better off we'll be. But I want to drink it all. <laughs> we I'm were a- drinking a fair <laughs> amount of it, let's be honest. It's very true. It's I'm very with, true. I'm with Alex on this one. We made a mistake. We should have never aired it on an episode. We shouldn't have told anyone we were making it. <laughs> the people that are listening to this aren't getting any. <laughs> At least not yet. Future, we'll think about it. Yeah, but people around here that listen to it know, and they're going to want some, and, but, but I want it for, for myself or, you know, us. Well, we plan, to, we plan to take another crack at it and brew another batch and hopefully more of it. And when we see more people, maybe they'll get some. If not, tough shit. <laughs> yeah, that's true. This isn't the last time we're going to be brewing this beer. Hell no. That would be a crime against taste buds mm, everywhere. Yes, and I have to say, on, on that note... Um, from a homebrew standpoint, uh, anyone who's a homebrewer out there would know that um, we like this so much that it's a extremely minor tweak that we're doing to the recipe for the next batch. That's how much we're enjoying it. So if you want some, hit us up on uh, iTunes with a review and uh, message us uh, with your address and maybe we might actually send you a bottle. We could do a little homebrew swap. I, I'm still up for send us your homebrews and let's judge them on air. Exactly. And, uh, I would love in to return, do that. return, we'll send you a bottle of ours. That's what makes America great. <sighs> yeah, exactly. America. Sharing. Sharing. Sharing is caring. Sharing, sharing is caring. <laughs> Absolutely. That's not how America was founded at all. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we won't, get, we won't get into that. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. It was, <laughs> but we shared something we shared sure have. I mean, my people shared with Alex's people. You not, guys gave not me so much your people. <laughs> Uh, going back to the tasting, though, like Alex was saying, I am loving the hoppiness in this. Uh, the, we use just so, so much hop in, in this beer, and it really shows, and it's not... It, it was done... Uh, Alex was the primary brewer on this, and a good job, because it's not an amateur amount of hops, where you just throw in hops and hope that it turns out okay, and it just turns out way too bitter. It's very well balanced, but the hop profile is just insane. Golf claps all around to Alex. Golf claps all around. <laughs> Thank you. There's more hops in this beer than I've used in my double IPA. It's a testament to your brand on hops. Yeah, I mean, we wanted it hoppy, so, I mean, it's fucking hoppy. <laughs> Absolutely. We we definitely lived up to the your brain on hops name when would we you, made this beer. Would you say, though, because we all sat down together and we were talking about what we wanted to see out of this beer, do you think we hit the mark on what we were going for, Alex? I think so. I know you enjoy a more West Coast style IPA um, with a bigger bitterness to it. Um, and I wanted that in here, but I also wanted the drinkability and the fresh crispness. See, I prefer a, I don't, well, I do like the bitterness of a West Coast IPA. I, I do. Because I do love my, my high reses and resins and, you know, those types. But uh, I've been. I don't know, juicy is the right word for it, or just a... Uh, juicy is a great word for an IPA. But, uh, I would use it to describe this. I would actually use the word moist to fruity. describe this. Ooh. Moist? It is a moist, a moist, moist, moist beer. Moist IPA. <laughs> it's a very moist IPA. What's the palate? It's a moist... <laughs> exactly. It's a moist brain on hops. Ooh, there you go. It's squishy. <laughs> <laughs> it's squishy. <laughs> All right, we're going down the wrong rabbit hole with that. Well, I, I mean, even in terms of geography... 
I think this is great for where we are here in western New York, uh, around Buffalo, because you have those juice bombs of an IPA in New England. And which then you, you have, have tonight. Which I, which I, yeah, I had one of those tonight. And then you have the, uh, the more hoppy, bitter, resinous IPAs of the West Coast. Mm-hmm. And Western New York is between both of those. And this has a lot of that strong bitterness of a West Coast IPA. And a lot of the juicy character of a New England IPA, but not the citrus juice bomb that's a New England IPA. So it's kind of a, a mesh of those two styles. And those are two styles I love, and I'm loving this mesh of them. A melting pot of beer. A melting, a melting pot, pot of, beer. of beer. And that's what makes America great. Exactly. Melting pot IPA? Ah. Don't give names away. <laughs> yeah. I haven't said the name of this. <laughs> Actually, I think when... I think when it comes to a beer, I think the fact I like that New England style because I find them usually to be a bit more refresh, refreshing. Yes, uh, and I I agree with that. Even though they can be really really hoppy, uh, so I think my my palate, at least right now, is tending to go more for the New England style than it is the West Coast. So, but I like the bitterness. So, do you think that's seasonal though? With the warm weather we've been having, you're going for something more refreshing than a big hot bomb? Could be. As it gets maybe a little cooler, I want something maybe a little more bitter. Not so, it doesn't have to be as crisp or, you know, as refreshing, you know, as it gets cooler. So probably maybe towards fall, I'll be drinking some more West Coast IPAs. This one too, I I would definitely like to drink this outdoors. Uh, on a warm day, mm-hmm. it's. I mean, there are some or delicious. Tuesday. Here's to Tuesday. Yeah. Here's to Tuesday. Yes. Let's well, pray to God it doesn't rain. <laughs> when this episode is coming out, we will most likely be eating tacos and drinking this beer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if you want to be jealous, go for it. Is not going to rain. <laughs> as far as sitting outside, though, I mean, some IPAs are delicious. I just wouldn't want to sit outside and drink them. And or, or, or sometimes I even have a second one, even though it's delicious. This one, though, absolutely. It's, it's going to be hard to only have one. But, yeah, and it's 7.6%. Um, you'll have a few, and then you will pass out. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, no, I, I'm agreeing with Dan here. That's uh, that's a very respectable number that uh, will get you past the point of buzz if you have mm-hmm. enough of them. But uh, it's not, it's not going to make me pass out. It's not going to you know, put me over the edge. That's uh, it, it's a it's a good craft beer lovers number mm-hmm. when it comes to ABV. I think the issue with being out in the sun though is the sun. The fact that's, that that's that's fair. That's not fair. necessarily um, on you, but on the beer itself. Mm-hmm. It will start to skunk the beer if it's in a pint glass or any kind of. I'm sorry, a tulip glass or a goblet or whatever you're drinking it out of a speak loud glass, which we're drinking out of right now, except for Dan because he broke the one last time. That's on Dan, though. Yes, it is. But um, I think with the clear glass, it'll go through and it does skunk the beer pretty quick if you're out in the sun. That's a good point. Well, speaking of speak loud glasses, anyway, the next beer we're gonna have for our American themed episode doesn't require any glass. That is Especially the beer America from Budweiser. Yeah, I would I would feel wrong <laughs> putting this beer in a speed bag glass. I felt extremely dirty just buying it. I felt, I'm, I'm glad it Sorry was you and not me. <laughs> felt like a whore. You had to come home, take a shower, <laughs> rinse Actually, rinse it off. <laughs> Yeah, so um, like I said, no glasses, and uh, well, gents, let's uh, let's open up our first macro brew on this on this podcast. Oh, I'm so ashamed. After tasting our own IPA, it tastes like goat. I can <laughs> I can taste no no hoppiness in this at all. It's corn. It's that corn taste. It is. It is very True. corny. I get yeah. I get a slight pilsner character out of it though. Yeah, I get I get I get a Pilsner malt in it. For me, it's a beer that's trying to be a corn beer. No, no, it's a corn beer that's trying to be a Pilsner. I get a weird sourness at the very, very a tail end of it. I, I, but that happens with you know whether it be Bud or Blue. There's a t- like even Miller High Life, and I love I like Miller High Life, but there's a weird sweetness and a little like this offset flavor. 
at the end of it that I get. I know what you're talking about. I get that too. Honestly, I think it helps when it warms up a bit, which usually that brings out flavor for profiles. It should not make this better. But, yeah, I don't think it would make this better. Well, no, okay, not with the taste, but with that uh, kind of sourness at the end. I think it goes away a little bit when the beer warms up, and it might be because the rest of the flavor profile is a little bit more pronounced. Let's be honest, we want this as cold as possible so we don't have to realize that we're tasting, yes, this. <laughs> you know, it is... Um... With uh, carbonation and the, the very, very light body, um, it is slightly refreshing. I'm a Miller guy. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, there's really not much to it besides no, that. That's like, it. <laughs> that, like, malt, that little bit of a, a Pilsner malt character, a corniness to it. Um, a light kind. It's so light, it's very undiscernible as what flavor but like i'd give it like a which a is why i think spicy people... hop character that might but then also to that sourness that dan mentioned and i agreed with earlier right but i don't know if maybe that's it's that or if it's the high carbonation yeah that's true i just want to say i'm i'm kind of proud of us i mean how many beer podcasts will have budweiser america and then talk about the flavor profile. Yeah. Well, we've got a special episode getting into uh, some other beers that are down this line, which I'm looking forward to, and seeing yeah. how our braids play out. Yeah, this okay. isn't going to be the end of uh, Macro no. Brews on your brand on hops. Um, one thing about this beer, though, is I'm not angry at this can. Uh, red. It, 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 it is red, busy, blue. but there's... There's yeah. no blue. Well, I guess it is. is that well, blue? the writing, isn't it blue? It looks silver, except no, that, that for America. Writing is blue. That the America, all the, the U.S. It's all blue. All the writing is blue. I think, I, yeah, yeah. The I think, U.S. I think and America blue. is blue. Nope. All the Everything oh, hail strikes the bright stars through the Paris fight. That's all blue. Also, I like how on the tab for the can it has the at uh, that Budweiser crown embedded in it's that. True. It's true. It's a little touch, but but it's nice. Yeah. Well, it's about the details. Yeah. 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 It's all about it's, the details and to distracting you with the fact that, hey, it doesn't shit. look like you're drinking a Budweiser. <laughs> I, um, mean, what, I mean, whatever they can do to accomplish that end. More you know, it, it is a very nice looking can. It's a very nice looking can. Yeah. For being, for representing America, it's a nice looking can. What's in it <laughs> is doesn't another story. At all. But does it represent America? I would say it, it is. It does. I, Technically, Budweiser is one of the yeah, it's is the, one of the uh, most sold beers in Budweiser, America. Budweiser, Blue Light. Uh, eh, Budweiser's well above Blue Light. I'm just thinking of. I'm just we're, thinking of, we're thinking of Bud Light, Western New York. I'm thinking Bud Light, yeah. not Blue Light. Bud Light. Bud Light. Uh, yeah, Bud Light, Coors, Miller's. Coors, Miller. Right. But Bud is definitely on top. Um, plus, I mean, just the the history in America. Not a great history in America because it helped drive out a lot of the the microbrew business in the 20th century. But still, it uh, was around for a while. Yeah, there are. There is another thing I want to say about this um, with the BJCP guidelines, which for anyone out there who doesn't know, it's the um, beer judging uh, beer judge certification program. The flavor profile of an American lager. The very first thing it says for flavor is. Relatively neutral palate with a crisp and dry finish and a moderately low uh, to low grainy or corn like flavor. Okay. I think they nailed it on the head. Well, the I don't, wait, wait, they've wait, always wait. been consistent of what they brew. We've, not, we've never taken that away. That's the right. that's they brew beer, it has been the same beer every time you open that can. And it's consistent. <laughs> yeah. No matter I I don't know how many breweries they have across the US to distribute throughout the entire US I believe there's at least three or four and in three or four in different locations across the US using different water sources and different things like that they're coming out with the exact same product everywhere so I don't know if this That's, is that is an accomplishment yeah so I don't know if this is legal but I just had a great thought we just came out with the first Your Brand Hops IPA mm-hmm Let's brew the first Your Brain and Hops 
our version of an American Pilsner. We have a special episode coming up. I want to take it a step further. I don't know if it's legal. <laughs> it's probably not. Enter 12 ounce bottles, unlabeled, of these cans, because the judging will just come back to us, the results, with our own beer, and see how our beer stacks up judged to the three we send in. I, I didn't follow you. I followed you. He followed me. Uh, Alex, can you relay? We brew an American premium lager, and we enter it, and we also enter a bottle of this that we uh, put into a different bottle. Hmm. You're right. Well, I don't know if legal is the right word. <laughs> Wildly unethical. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's bad if we win something, <laughs> but... <laughs> Ethics. I would feel bad. Is that what this country is founded on? <laughs> Ethically, I would have a problem with it if it won. So what if I do it behind your back? <laughs> For myself, I would be wildly entertained when it loses. <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty okay, great. <laughs> it gets like a four. <laughs> oh. But I kind of want to do it. <laughs> you just want to know. You just want to know. <laughs> Are you guys ready for the worst segue ever? Let's move on to our next beer here. Uh, we last had America by Budweiser, which is a Pilsner. Next, we will taste a Pilsner, an Imperial Pilsner, but let's not get hung up on the details, from Victory, uh, the 20th anniversary Imperial Pilsner. Frankly, I'm loving that this is coming right after Budweiser, and it's just washing that taste right out of my mouth. Cause I agree. I'm kind of liking this Pilsner. I definitely agree. I like the, um, it is it is a Pilsner, yes, it's uh, Imperial, so it should have a more substantial character to it, to back up the alcohol, but um, I'm getting like a honey graham cracker type of... I agree, it has... Like a lemongrass in there too. Oh, lemongrass, interesting. That I wasn't getting, but now that you mention it, sounds familiar. But the honey graham cracker, kind of bready area, mm-hmm. I mean, when you start to bump up a lager or a pilsner, I suppose it'll start to come through, and I'm I'm liking the effect of it. Now that you said lemongrass, yeah, a little hint of that. It's nice. It tastes like cleaning solution, and I'm actually washing my mouth out with America to get rid of the taste <laughs> of that. Take note, listeners. I'm An actually epi- saying... Wash your mouth out with uh, America. A, a, a <laughs> member of a beer podcast just said he would rather drink America from Budweiser. Oh, I know I'm not happy with this. <laughs> than an Imperial Pilsner I'm from gonna Victory I'm Brewing gonna, oh, Company. I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna. I'm gonna take the hate. I just. I just. I just don't see a, 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 an upside here. <sighs> I was you, not a fan of this beer coming into this podcast because I'm the only one on the podcast who has had this beer. The first time I I saw it, I was like, oh, I like Victory, and I saw this Imperial Pilsner. I was like. I'm actually a big fan of Pilsners. I bought the bottle, and I had it in my fridge, and I was like, alright, I'll have this, you know, maybe on the weekend or something like this. Went out, I was like, you know what, screw it, I'm gonna bought the bottle at our beer store, they chilled it, cracked it for me. I was so disappointed <laughs> in what I was drinking. When I got home over the weekend, I think it was actually right around St. Patrick's Day, because I know what I used the beer for. I took the entire bottle of that beer, and I didn't even drink any of it. I just dumped it into the corned beef I was going to be making. I was like, you know what? Fuck water. I'm going to use beer. I might as well use this for something because I'm not going to drink it. Well, then that was a good use of it. So it was a good use it, of instead beer. Of, instead of you either suffering through it oh. or dumping it so because you didn't want it. Memory, yeah, I'm not, used it I'm not angry at that story. No. Yeah. But, so, I'm, But the memory of it, I was like, I'm still... Not thrilled. Now here's my question about for you. this beer. Victory came out with another 20th anniversary experimental IPA that we had on the show. Um, I don't remember what I said or that beer. I believe <laughs> it was I horrific. Believe that... <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. Okay. And I I do believe that the three of us weren't 100 percent impressed with it. No, there it, were there it were was some redeeming qualities about it, but for a twentieth anniversary beer, 
I thought, yes, we thought it was a little underwhelming. Th- that was one of the points we made, though, was a 20th anniversary. I mean, anything called anniversary, but especially something like a 20th anniversary. Right. And you kind expect of... it to be special. Right. And it tasted like an average to a little bit below average session IPA. It tasted experimental. Yeah, yeah. It Which, tasted very experimental. I mean, to be fair, 20th anniversary, okay, you're expecting big things, and then experimental... Okay, this might not be that great. This is an experiment. So maybe this is their redeeming beer. Granted, Dan's not a fan, but... <laughs> I'm not a fan of this beer. Not to say that I'm not a fan of victory, okay? Right. <laughs> All I'm saying is that Dan's not a fan, but I'm definitely a fan of this as a 20th anniversary beer. I think this is mm. a pretty solid beer for them to call it a 20th anniversary. That's a good point. I, I can get on board with that. It's a... Uh, I mean, any time a craft brewery makes a Pilsner... Well, I should say a craft brewery that specializes in ales, because obviously Jack's Abbey is going to make awesome Pilsners, that's what they do. But a craft brewery that specializes in ales, which is almost all of them, when they do a Pilsner... So, anyway, what I was saying, um, any time a craft brewery that mostly does ales makes a lager or a Pilsner, it is... I mean, I'm impressed by it, if they can come out with a good product... And I think this is a good product. Uh, it's an Imperial, so it's going to be bigger. It's not going to ha- be the same kind of crisp, refreshing Pilsner that you're used to, because it's right. not 5%. But that also takes a much more delicate hand in balancing such a light Pilsner profile into an Imperial Pilsner. True. And uh, just for information's sake, this does come in at 8% ABV. What, um, what class does that say it is? It is an Imperial... It just says style Imperial Pilsner. Yeah, what does it say next to that on the left? <laughs> you, I see you've read the bottle. The, so it gives four categories right on the bottle. Contents, alcohol, class, and style. The class is beer. <laughs> Thank you. They, I mean, to be fair, they're not wrong. They're not. They're not. It, it is beer. I don't know if they need to, to, to write that on the bottle. <laughs> My guess is that they did it as kind of a joke, so I wanted to put it out there. <laughs> Thank you. We are drinking beer. We are drinking beer. <laughs> well, speaking of the class of beer, our next beverage also falls into this class. As a beer? A beer. Really? I know. No way. Wonder of wonders. Uh, to be fair, I did warn everyone at the beginning of this episode, this is a very loose theme we have for this oh, podcast. Loose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dan knows. <laughs> What are you trying to say? He's he's saying you brought this beer. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Daniel. <laughs> yeah, I'm just a drunk slut at the party. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. But a lot the of na- people like drunk sluts at parties. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to speak against that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The next beer we have, though, to try, uh, it's the Americano from Stone. So... I mean, technically, it has American right in the name, so we're definitely sticking to the theme, even though we're going... It's about America. It's about, it's about America. America. We're going to an Imperial Stout after tasting an Imperial Pilsner. Oh, we're sticking with Imperial beers, too. So, awesome job, us. <laughs> it was totally an accident. Yes, <laughs> but I also think that um, for an like Americano, it's it's a very American... Stout, it's bold. It's very bold in the flavor. The uh, big espresso character in there. It's bold like America. Um, yeah, boldness. Right. What great makes American bold. great? It's got a nice resinous hop character to it to really back up that big coffee character in there. I think it's. I think it's really nice. It's. It's very American. I I, I agree. I think that some coffee beers, which. Mostly porters and stouts, they they don't have anything to balance out the coffee, and they just try to go really strong on the coffee. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, I like where your head's at, but way too often it just turns into... I mean, it's like when you put too, you want to use too many grounds or beans when you're making coffee. Sure, in theory, it's going to be awesome coffee. It just turns out really bad. You're getting too much of that bitterness, right. too much of the acidity in there. You need and balance. It, yeah, balance. Exactly. And balance is what makes America great. There's no balance in America right now. We are completely unbalanced. 
You're not wrong. <laughs> That's that, what makes America great. <laughs> we just don't give a fuck. Unbalanced. <laughs> But yeah, that's uh, uh, like you said with this stout, that hot profile that helps balance out the uh, the coffee and everything the coffee brings to a beer, which is a lot. Um, definitely makes this a great beer. Black like slavery. Another American thing. <laughs> post, post American post. or post thing. Yes, it's not <laughs> applicable We're anymore. Past this. We're past it. We've resolved that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> We're on to celebrating. These slavery, of really? We're celebrating slavery, Alex? That's where we are now? I see how it is. I'm done with this show. I'm out of here. Bye! <laughs> <laughs> wow. I can't. Well, I want to. <laughs> I want to say that was inappropriate, but it was so well timed. So. <laughs> We now, have not been said, drinking at all whatsoever. Uh, no, no. That being said, I love you, dude. <laughs> love. Offer me money. <laughs> love. That's what makes America great. Wait, no. Bribery. Yes. That's what makes America great. That's what makes America great. <laughs> so, yeah, the good redistribution beer. of funds. <laughs> the redistribution of funds. That's what makes America socialist. Are you really complaining? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so this beer also, um, I mean, it's the last beer we're going to do for the podcast today. And it is the highest ABV as well, 8.7. Uh, the Imperial Pills are clocked in at 8. Our beer, of course, how we mentioned, uh, 7.6. And then that Budweiser, I mean, who knows? 4, 4.5. 4, 4. Point, yeah, yeah. Below 5. I was going to say this poorly labeled can. It probably doesn't. It just gives government warnings next to America. Actually, that's also suitable. <laughs> and that's what makes America great. <laughs> We're making America great again with beer. With regulatory agencies. 5%. Oh, it is 5. What? That's, that's, I thought it was under. That's actually... That's, I'm, that's I'm acceptable. Okay, that. yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Acceptable, well, America. Not, acceptable. This, this is Budweiser. It's not Bud That's Light. true. No. I think I was thinking lighter of the light beer version. Because that's 4.5. Right. You're right. Those lighter versions are the ones that are between 4 and 4.5. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay, that makes sense. So yeah, the highest ABV beer we've been drinking tonight, this Americano Stout. Uh, definitely the darkest. Everything else has been either Pilsner's or mm. our IPA with that beautiful cloudy golden color. I brought the I really, darkness. I <laughs> You did, Dan. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now, actually, quick question to both of you. Um, Americano style, based off of coffee, a lot of coffee flavor here. Have either of you either had this beer for breakfast or a similar coffee beer for breakfast before? Yes, yes, and maybe <laughs> yes ten more times. Um, not this particular one, but yes to I've had uh, similar ones for breakfast. Were, were they cough? Uh, the... What was it? Uh, coffee Stone Coffee Stout uh, and uh, the Founder's Breakfast Stout. And uh, yeah. most of the times, it's usually during the pig roast that I do every year because I'm up at 6 a.m. getting yeah. a goddamn smoker ready and I run out of coffee and I'm like, well, time to switch. <laughs> you're doing you're doing God's work, man. I, I couldn't get up that early just to smoke a pig. Yeah. It's what I'm good at. I'm Jewish and I'm black. I cook a pig. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I yeah. If you say the math adds up, I'm gonna trust you on that. Adds up in my head. God would have, God would have put a pig on this country if you don't want me to cook it. There, there, there you go. Fair enough. All right. So, uh, so when you're up early for the uh, the almost ritualistic uh, procedure of cooking the pig, um, Alex, when have you had coffee beers? Um, actually, I didn't even think about it until you mentioned the. Uh, Founders breakfast stout, but yes, I've had one of those for breakfast as well. But it's always been uh, ten fifty with me. Ooh, that's right. Your blues. You have taken that with you to many a Bills game. Oh yeah, every okay. Every Bills game. Every, <laughs> every home Bills game. That is my uh, first beer that I crack open in the morning. Tastes like coffee, and it's it. It takes me long enough to drink it that I have enough food in my stomach. That 
That's it fair. Doesn't, it doesn't upset my stomach by drinking really early in the morning. And it gives me enough alcohol that it really carries through with the time period that I'm drinking it. And I'm enjoying a really, really good beer in the meantime. Yeah. Eating food and... Yeah, it's just... it. It works really well for me. And that's a good point. Uh, 1050 from Oscar Blues. It's not a beer you chug, so it Ooh. almost forces you <laughs> to start the morning a little bit slower. You're not starting off shotgun right. beers. Exactly. Pushing yeah. shotgun um, that 1050 next time. <laughs> like I've, a champion. I've like an American. I've had people tell me that. They're like, I want to see you pound that. Oh, that'd I'm be like, a horrible choice. No. I'm like, I actually brought a glass to the next game that I went to. Poured a, the ten fifty into a, a goblet, swished it around, and had people actually see the legs on it because not many beers really have legs. Yeah, yeah. Ten fifty. <laughs> well ten fifty is thick. That is a thick beer. It runs slow down the sides of the glass. And the second I showed some people that, they were like, holy shit. Big that's black a booty beer. and gams. <laughs> Big black booty and gams. That's what makes America great. <laughs> that's the next stout I do. I'm just going to take booty and gams. You should absolutely create a stout and name it <laughs> Big Black Booty and Gams. <laughs> that would be a, a delicious beer. Um,. But that's a that's a good approach to the uh, the morning beers, um, especially peer pressure on the morning beers. Like, let me show you something real quick. You show them, and then I'm sure they weren't like, "Oh yeah, you should still chug that." They were probably like, "Damn, let me shut you." The that hell beer's up got legs. <laughs> Honestly, I was prepared to actually give them a can of it and be like, "I'll tell you what, you chug it." Ah, the old put up or shut up technique. Yes, yeah, well, I hey, like that. Works. Nice, nice. Yeah, salad. See, I've never actually had a uh, coffee or a stout for breakfast. I've had other beers. Like I've started early, and I've had beers, but never. I mean, both of you mentioned the uh, the breakfast uh, stout from Founders. Obviously, as the name suggests, it sounds awesome in the morning, but. Never done it. It's always just been like other beers that I've started with, just whatever I've had at hand or, you know, whatever the occasion was, whether I was on vacation or whatever. I gotta coffee? be honest here. I do drink coffee. Okay. Yeah. I know you, and you are not a morning person. No, that's that's so part of it, what too. what is yeah. your morning? Because so when you say you're having a beer, what time are we really talking here? Yeah, when you're your, rolling out of bed? What's What's your lunch beer? <laughs> your lunch beer? <laughs> See, that's a better question. Yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. Lunch beers, I could, I could go on a list of those. Um, no, Maybe bre- you're coming? <laughs> oh. Yeah, Have lunch. some solid lunch? <laughs> because, what was it, two years ago when we had the ginormous storm in Buffalo here? I woke up 8 o'clock in the morning. I was like, all right, I don't even feel like dealing with this crap anymore. We're day three in. I'm still stuck at home. And I remember what I poured into my coffee mug. My mom was horrified because I poured in a dogfish head worldwide stout into my Woo! coffee mug. And I drank it first thing in the morning. And I said, fuck <laughs> this day. <laughs> Damn. Good for you, man. Good for you. You know what? If you would have texted me that day, I would have done the same thing. <laughs> well, because later that night, I had a 120 chilling in the snow mound that was up past my window in the snow, and Dogfish got back to me and said, good for you. <laughs> I'm like, thank you. They acknowledge my perils, but I'm not alone at least. Oh, man. Hashtag Buffalo. Hashtag Buffalo. <laughs> Hopefully, we won't have a winter like that again. Are you fucking kidding me? I want a winter like that again. <laughs> Chris doesn't want a winter like that again. Because what happened was, I was fully prepared and stocked. Chris was shit out of luck with no beer. I was not. I was not. I said, hey, fuck it. I got a week off of work. My TV and internet connection is still working. I'm just getting drunk. Yeah. No, I mean, part of it is my job I can actually do from home. So being stranded in my home didn't mean that I could skip work. It just meant I still worked an eight-hour day. I just had to do it from home. 
And also, I was very poorly stocked on beer, which that part's on me, and I'll fully admit that. And honestly, at the end of the week, so it started, it, it, it was a week event. It started on like Monday or that weekend, ended on Friday, Saturday. And on Friday, I finally got out. I went downtown, uh, downtown East Aurora, went to Aurora Brew Works because I wanted a beer. Uh, that was when the sides of the the side of the roads still had um, like, kind of like 10, 12 feet of snow, and I climbed over that to get to Aurora Brew Works and finally get a good beer, and uh, <laughs> and from that beer <laughs> from that ordeal, I regret nothing. Everyone's just dressed in animal skins, <laughs> chugging along, grunting. We've gone back to the caveman days, <laughs> holy mammoths are roaming the streets. <laughs> But yeah, it was a it was a good lesson. Um, always have a stockpile of beer just in case, just in case you can't get out for a little I mean, while. There was when you got to East Aurora, even when the, finally the roads got cleared, like you saw like people are snowmobiling, snowshoeing, skiing, and now that we've got forty two out there, if we get hit with that again, oh yeah, if forty two North I hope can I'm get in East Aurora. <laughs> If, if 42 North can get people to staff the place during a giant snowstorm like that, that that would be a haven. Yeah. You'd have people walking from... Barbell was open yeah, with the, wings the and beef. Village going there. Everybody that. was open with beer. I will chug through the snow happily, yeah. drinking away with no open container lock. Da- Absolutely. Dan lives in Alma, which for our, for our listeners, it's a few miles away from the area we're talking about. He would brave these treacherous... Winter conditions just to go to 42 almost, North Brewery. I almost did <laughs> that store. So my only issue with that is that I am so close to 42 North that they would probably call me into work instead of drinking. And you will pour me <laughs> beer, Alex. It's okay. I would be sitting there pouring beer instead of and working instead of drinking. Let's face I'm okay it, with though, because I got my beer. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. <laughs> That's what I'm about. True. Looking out for number one. <laughs> Let's face it, though. The uh, the rules probably wouldn't apply. The standard rules probably wouldn't apply yeah. on a day like that. I'm sure you'd be able to do your fair share of drinking as you'd well. You'd get more than probably. one beer per shift. <laughs> That's probably true. All right. Well, we're coming to the end of the podcast here. So we wanted to bring back a segment we do every once in a while called What I've Been Drinking. That was actually kind of a slight impromptu what I've been drinking here with the whole coffee thing. I thought that was your out. That was actually well played. (laughs) No, I mean, none of that was recent. Yours was from the fall. Alex's was from the fall because of the Bills games. Yeah, they know when football games take place. (laughs) <laughs> what I will be drinking for football season is pretty uh, <laughs> I can't wait for football. Yeah, especially oh, God, I can't wait for football. Especially since uh recently, and by recently I mean the past sixteen years, Bills games haven't gone past December. Can, can I make this yes, suggestion? Really? Last year. We had one game in January. Yeah. Uh, it was the last game. Our Pops tailgate party for the New England game. Ooh. I'll be there. <laughs> I'm in every game. What right. coffee beer will you be drinking? Oscar Blues, motherfucker! <laughs> if we remember, we will publicize that more. Chris, you're going to have to get up early. <laughs> no dice. Fine, we'll, we'll do it at your house and we'll just pound on your door. <laughs> that's that's fair. I'll, I'll be, I'm we cool can, with that. We can drug him at dinner on Saturday so he falls asleep. I'll just break him through his window. No, it's not fine. It's not a matter of when I go to sleep. I can go to sleep way early. Oh, shit. I still don't want to get up. But if you were, like, well-rested because you went to bed at, like, no. 6 He doesn't like getting up. <laughs> nope. He can go to bed the at standard a reasonable rules time. Don't apply. Even if we told you there's an Oscar Blues 1050 waiting for you? No, that won't do it. That, that, I've, I've never had a beer waiting for me before. Chris and I go. When you wake up, really? Yeah. Don't you have a fridge? (laughs) Well, it doesn't occur to me. (laughs) They're all waiting for you, my friend. It doesn't occur to me to go drink beer out of the fridge. (laughs) Really? Because that's the first thing I think about doing when I wake up in the morning. (laughs) (laughs) Um. So yes, what I've been drinking. Other, you know, within the past six months. (laughs) Oh, six months. Five. Six months. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you've got some time here. By the way, 
It's only it's still June. That means January. That is winter. That still counts. Yeah, but I know the pig roast was not within the past six months. Damn you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's right. Um, I'll I'll lead off. Um, recently, I had a Supreme Leader from Licking Hole Creek Craft Brewery. Licking Hole. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. It was a stout that was brought in by a friend of ours, Jeremy, and um, it was it was awesome. Uh, and was and this was one. yeah, this was a night when we were doing a uh, cooler roulette where we try a whole bunch of different beers, basically a bottle share. So there's a lot going on that night to begin with, but this this one really stood out, and um, I was I was very impressed by uh, the Supreme Leader. Um, I mean, huge beer, thirteen percent ABV. So of course it had a bit of booziness to it, but just the flavor profile of this stout was insane. So that's uh, that's one that stood out to me recently. Um, how about you guys? Um, actually, tonight. Before we recorded, I went to uh, Ebenezer Ale House uh, for dinner with my parents, and I had I started off with a Stone Enjoy by uh, July Fourth. Um, it was really good. Another just you know big fresh you know IPA. Yep. Um, like every other Enjoy by, it was really good. I followed that up with a. Main Beer Company, uh, Tiny Beautiful Something, which is an uh, American Pale Ale. Um, it was really good. It was it had a sweetness to it that I really enjoyed. Um, it was really, really drinkable. Um, and then my mom couldn't finish her beer because she thought it was a little too sweet. But the uh, Southern Tier Salted Caramel. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Imperial Stout. Um, that is really sweet. It is very sweet, but uh, I thought it was pretty decent. I like salted caramel to begin with, but I uh, I don't know. I thought it was I thought it was pretty decent. Yeah. So I helped her finish it. What a good son you are. I gotta do what I gotta do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And after Mother's Day, nonetheless. Yeah. Good well, for you. Father's good Day was you. closer. Father. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I would have finished my father's, you know, <laughs> other IPAs that he was drinking. So. <laughs> Soon, soon. Soon. <laughs> uh, Dan, how about you? What have you been drinking recently? Uh, the uh, Well, beforehand I was drinking the watermelon lime uh, ale from New Belgium. I had a six-pack of that in my fridge. Watermelon lime? Mm-hmm. Very refreshing. Like The first time I had it, unfortunately, it was uh, at Aurora Brewer's. And the first and the rep, like he wasn't chilling the beers properly. <laughs> Shame on him. <laughs> But it was like really, really warm, and I was really disappointed in it. But I, my friends, like, no, it's so good. I was like, I can see this could be a lot better on a hot day. Like it would be really refreshing. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna give it another shot. And I'm like, this is actually really good. And I don't know. I've been on a watermelon beer kick. I even went back to the try the Twenty uh, First Amendment Heller High Watermelon Beer, and uh, even enjoyed that right off the tap at a. Uh, a B W and uh that was even enjoyable to me. I was like uh uh maybe I'm just like watermelon too much. <laughs> you know, I like that uh hell of a watermelon. So I was not a fan when I first had it. And for some reason it this time around it. Yeah. Uh, when I first had it early in the stage it tasted too much like that artificial like watermelon bubblegum kind of taste. Like it was just too yeah, artificial and I don't know what it is about now that I find it eh, it's pretty it's good maybe it's just fact it needs to be cold or you know like frigid like I almost froze one of the new Belgian beers though that's what I noticed like have you, have you tried the uh, watermelon double IPA from Ballast Point I have not it's uh was it the Durango I believe it's called. Not the watermelon sculpin, is it? No, it's no. not a sculpin. It's a Durango. It's the double okay. IPA. They instead of fruiting the sculpin with watermelon, they did it with the Durango double IPA. Gotcha. Yeah, one more bottle upstairs if you guys want to try it before we go. Mm. Like, well, we well, listeners, that sounds like the end of our episode. We have <laughs> like we're going home. <laughs> we have important business to be about. <laughs> um, 
Actually, though, yeah, that is the end of our episode. So thank We're you, everyone. We're done with this. We're done with America. <laughs> Nonsense. America will go on for thousands of years. <sighs> so uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, of course, visit our websites, uh, yourbrainonhops.com. That's where you can find us on Facebook as well, Your Brain on Hops. Uh, check us out on Twitter and Instagram, both at Brain on Hops. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you think we suck, if you want us to taste a certain beer, if you want to comment on the beers that we had, you know, we're always open to comments, so feel free to go ahead and leave one. Represent.com. Two days left to get another t-shirt if you didn't buy one already. Nope, that's not true, because this episode is going to come out afterwards. Damn it! <laughs> but, uh, so you should have bought your shirt so by now. So if you didn't buy it, I'm disappointed in you. It was for charity, and you're a sucky human being. I wouldn't go that far, but you do suck. <laughs> For a good cause, you let me down. People hurt me. And this, hurt and, me. And, and this is why I normally do the closing. There's a lot less yelling. <laughs> All right. Uh, do what I want, like America. Cheers, everyone. Peace. Cheers.